Polyphony have finally done it. The first ever post-launch car in Gran Turismo 7 to hit an eye-watering price of 20 million credits. Enter the legendary Mercedes-Benz W196R from 1955. A classic Formula 1 race car with an extensive and rich history, it now claims the title as the most expensive post-launch addition to the game. But with a price tag this steep, is it a must-have for your collection or is it better left in the dealership? Well, that's exactly what we'll do today as we explore everything about this car. We'll dive into the real-world history, motorsport heritage and how it fits the overall landscape of Gran Turismo 7. As mentioned, the Mercedes-Benz W196R from 1955 now sits as the most expensive post-launch car to Gran Turismo 7, surpassing the previous record holder by over 10 million in-game credits, a pretty massive margin. Now in terms of these stats, they're really not that special. 603.20 pp, a displacement of 2,497 cc an FR drivetrain, 289 brake horsepower, weighing 830 kilograms, and of course, is naturally aspirated. At least from the stats alone, it's pretty middle of the road. Now this iconic machine is one of only three official Formula 1 cars in Gran Turismo 7. All three have arrived post-launch to the game. The roster now includes the McLaren MP4-4, of course driven by Ayrton Senna, the Honda RA272, of course taking Honda's first ever win in Formula 1, and now of course the Mercedes W196R. These three cars span three distinct decades of Formula 1 racing, the 1950s, 1960s and 1980s, each representing a unique chapter in the history of motorsport. So let's begin the review then by talking about the real world history of the Mercedes-Benz W196R. This was a revolutionary Formula 1 car produced for the 1954 and 1955 F1 seasons. It succeeded the W194, so of course in the hands of legends such as Fangio and Sterling Moss, the car went on to become a fairly unstoppable force in the world of Formula 1. It secured an incredible 9 wins in 12 races, capturing back-to-back -back world championships for Mercedes-Benz. Two configurations of the car were built, there was the standard model or the monoposto which you are seeing here in game, and of course the other iconic model was the streamlined variant or Monza version. The so called Monza version was completely aimed at hitting extreme top speeds. The version represented in GT7 appears to be the car that Fandio drove to victory in the 1955 Belgian Grand Prix, en route to his third overall world title. The W196R has a pretty tragic sibling. The Mercedes Benz 300 SLR, which isn't currently featured in Gran Turismo 7, went on to dominate the sports car racing scene of the mid 1950s. However, the tragic 1955 Le Mans disaster, which claimed the lives of 83 spectators and a driver, led Mercedes Benz to withdraw from motorsport for decades after. This moment marked a somber turning point in racing history and actually saw the end of Mercedes-Benz in the racing scene for many, many decades after. So although the W196R and the sports car based upon it, the 300 SLR had a relatively short racing career, they have absolutely cemented themselves as legends for the right reasons and of course, in a sense, the wrong reasons. Now in 2013, one of these cars reportedly sold for over £20 million, making it one of the most valuable cars in the world and considering its real world worth, the 20 million credit in-game price at Gran Turismo 7 seems kind of somewhat justified, at least from a historical perspective, as these things are clearly sought after. So the W196R is undeniably a racing legend, both on the track and in the history books, and now thanks to Gran Turismo 7, players around the world can experience this masterpiece in digital form, provided you can afford its hefty price tag. 
so by its real world history and what this car achieved, it's absolutely justified for the 20 million price tag. Of course, it's absurd numbers, but if there's people out there willing to pay it, and of course, Haggerty are valuing the car at that, then well, we can't really argue. However, you may be wondering, well, what is it like in game? And I'm happy to report that it isn't actually bad at all. My biggest fear when it came to this car is that Polyphony would absolutely butcher it some way, it would be completely undrivable and it would be completely useless. And thankfully, I can report that this is not only a very useful car for grinding credits, considering it's a classic Formula 1 car, it's great on its tyres and great on its fuel, so if you do want to use it for the longer races, you can absolutely do that and earn a bit of that 20 million credits back. But also, in terms of the performance itself, it really is absolutely fantastic to drive. There's a ton of personality to this car, whether you're accelerating out of corners with the tail trying to get away from you, absolutely growling down the straights with that beautiful engine note, or maybe you're getting ready to slam the brakes on as hard as possible for the upcoming corner. Well, I'm happy to report that this car can pretty much do it all. Of course, out of the box, the stats are very 1950s and it's not going to absolutely blow your mind away to today's standard. However, in terms of the driving experience for the real driving simulator, this car is top tier and absolutely beautiful. But performance is all well and good, but what about the model itself? And I'm happy to report that Polyphony have done a superb job modeling the 196R. Everything from the race seat to the huge steering wheel, the dials, the model itself, the wheels, it looks absolutely superb. So in terms of the car itself, it really is not only a beautiful car to look at, but a fantastic and alive car to drive. But I wouldn't say this is where the car stands out at all. I really don't give Polyphony enough credit with the job that they did with VR. Honestly, Gran Turismo 7 is perhaps the best VR game for the PSVR 2, and it's now even better thanks to the most recent update alongside the PS5 Pro. And just like the Honda RA272 a year and a half ago, this car stands out as one of the best experiences in VR. And honestly, if you're a VR player, you're doing yourself an injustice by not picking this thing up. Yes, it has a fairly hefty price tag, but is it worth it for the VR alone? 100%. The whole open cockpit, the huge wheel upwards in front of you, and the fact that you can see your driver's reflection in the dial in front of you, and as you move your head, your driver does too, really leads to this incredibly detailed experience. And not only that, it is sure one of the edgiest drives in the entirety of GT7. If you want to make the VAR experience even better, if you've got yourself a Honda RA272, then stack up a 420 grid mixed with the Honda and the Mercedes, and you're in for one of the best VR experiences I've ever had. The sights, the sounds, the looks, the VR replay, it all is incredibly immersive and looks absolutely stunning to match. So my final thoughts is this car is absolutely usable. Is it worth 20 million credits? Absolutely. If you're a VR player, you need to do yourself a favor and just pick this thing up. However, if you don't necessarily appreciate racing history or you're not a fan of classic cars, then this one may not be for you. And that's absolutely fine. But for the collector, get this one as soon as possible. And there we go, that is my look at the Mercedes-Benz W196R from 1955. A legend of the Formula 1 world, and of course, a legend of motorsport history. However, you can now experience it in digital form in Gran Turismo 7. And there is no denying this as a beautiful in-game model, it's usable, and you can go ahead and have plenty of fun with it, especially if you're a VR player. Now honestly, in my opinion, this is definitely one you need to experience at least once. So that's it from me, thank you so much for watching, I will see you in the next episode. A big shout out to all my channel members listed on screen now, take care guys, peace.